Good afternoon. Welcome to Craft Stash Live. I hope you're all really well or as well as can be at the moment. Um, we understand that obviously a lot of you are at home now. Maybe you've been sent home from work. Maybe you're used to being in on a Friday afternoon. This is the norm for you, but I'm so glad you could join me. I'm Lou Collins. I'm going to be here with you every single Friday throughout whatever's happening we are going to be coming live maybe from here maybe from my home even if we have to but we will be with you here at craft stash so um just to let you know um at the moment um you may have got to know some of the people at craft stash we're all doing really well okay everybody's working really hard to make sure we are bringing you crafting videos inspiration brand new products and of course keeping the craft stash website up and running 24 7 for you so um do let us know on facebook um let us comment let us know how you're doing um we all like to have a chat we like to communicate especially as crafters people with the same sort of mindset so get social with us all the time even if we're not live you can chat with other people through all of our platforms as well we love to hear from you and what you're doing in fact I'd really love to know what you are doing in the way of crafting whilst you are indoors more uh, spending less time out and about at the moment because of course it's really important that crafting um, it's, it's great for mindfulness of course it keeps us busy um, and it's actually giving us more time for our hobby so um, make sure as well that you are tagging and sharing as you always do on this Facebook live because we have got an amazing giveaway. I am joined with, kind of joined with Craft Consortium today. Unfortunately, as you may have gathered, I can't have Angela with me today for obvious reasons. Um, she would have had to travel quite a way to get here. So I instead have some fantastic inspiration from her in the way of photos that I'll be showing you later. And we also have a fantastic demo too from one of the DT members from Craft craft consortium so we'll be able to play that out also so that's going to be really good fun I've got my own demonstration too so please do make sure you stay tuned for the whole hour so first of all what I need to do is make sure that we are up and running let me just see I'm having problems with my phone today I don't know about anyone else um, I'm on my mobile network and um, having some issues so fingers crossed let me just have a look at the craft stash page which is where you're going to find us on facebook if you're watching now you'll have found us so let's just have a little look and see whether we are there i can see me it's very strange seeing me on my phone but that's what you can see so we've got some comments so uh oh kimmy um i hope so she's recovering from emergency surgery i'm so sorry i hope you're feeling a lot better lots and lots of rest um hello to sharon hello to kelsey hello to um, oh, another Sharon, I think it is. There's too many of you. Charlie, Janine, Vicky, well done. Thank you so much for joining us. I know you're probably all busy. You've got other things to think of at the moment, but the crafting is so, so important for us all to keep that going. And like I say, at Craft Stash, we are going to be keeping that going for you all the time. So the first thing I want to do is show you this gorgeous collection. Don't forget, if you want to win, this is part of the collection I'm going to show you. Let me just pop you on this camera here. So this is part of what is new for you today to show you. So we've got Farm Meadow from Craft Consortium. We also have another collection that is Cottage Garden that I want to run through as well. Now you are going to be in with the chance of winning. This giveaway is over £200. So I'm going to have two winners. There's going to be one from the post that went up on Monday. I think it's usually on a Monday. Earlier this week we had a post go up that you needed to comment on that i believe it was craft consortium you needed to comment on that and you could you've still got time to go back and comment on that post to be in the chance of winning one of the bundles and then this bundle the second one is going to be by commenting on this live feed now underneath you don't have to comment anything in particular i just love to know what you're doing to get you through these times at the moment to keep up the positivity and keep your crafting going okay so farm meadow is absolutely beautiful i love it and it's so perfect for this time of year as well we've got spring coming up we're going to see the bunnies and we're going to see all the um the farmyard animals coming through as well we've got i actually live in the countryside so this is perfect for me this is this just reminds me of a village down the road so we've got here first of all starting in the middle 12 by 12 paper pad isn't it absolutely beautiful okay so you can see from the front image there if i lay that back down flat so you can see the images around the edge that's kind of the gist of what you're going to be getting okay it is 
beautiful. So as I open it up, look at these. Not only do you get your papers, 12 by 12 papers, really, really good quality. Some of these, I don't think you can quite see that. Some of these have a sheen on them, like a pearlescent sheen as well. You have images on the inside of the cover as well. You could use that as a backing sheet or you could even cut those out, do some fussy cutting. So just go through. In fact, um, if you were watching my live a few weeks ago when I had my top 20 of 2020, and it wasn't, it was top 10 of 2020, this pad made it into that list purely because I love the designs. I think they're absolutely beautiful. They're perfect for fussy cutting, perfect for backgrounds. Look at the little ducks and the little chickens. Um, everyone's just like me. You're saying you, you love them. You love the animals. You love the bunnies as well. There's lots of bunnies in this. This is the one where I said this paper... I don't know if my mum's watching, she'll agree with me. When I was little, and I'm talking four or five years old, I had a wallpaper from a very expensive shop, um, beginning with L-A, and I had the wallpaper that looked just like this, and I remember completely ruining it with my crayons and my mum not being very happy, but that just brings back so many, so many lovely memories. Not the one of my mum being mad at me, but... You know what I mean, childhood memories. But look at these papers, they are absolutely stunning. We've got little bunnies in with these florals. You could cut into these florals, you could fussy cut them as well. And then we've got our gardening tools here. So maybe you know somebody who loves their gardening, who loves, uh, they've got a vegetable patch, an allotment maybe. These are going to be perfect. We've also got foiled papers in here as well. Um, some nice solid pa or, or less detailed backing papers. I really like this with the wheat growing through there as well. Butterflies, you get the gist. Absolutely beautiful. So that's the 12 by 12 paper from Farm Meadow. Then we've also got, I won't go through this again because it is the same as the larger pad, but we've got the version in six by six as well. You can see you've got, the, you have got the foiled papers in there as well. You've got some of the pearlescent ones too in there. So we've then got as well some stamps. We've actually got five stamp sets in this collection so there's a lot in there um people are saying this is cute they're loving the colors oh sharon says she's a gardener she loves the tools yes they would be perfect for anybody who does their gardening like i say as an allotment ideal now these are adorable as well so these stamps what i might do actually i might just switch this to the close-up view for you just so you can see these stamps a little bit better so oh, let's not get the shine on them look at those so we've got a bouquet of flowers sort of hand tied there we've got a jar of flowers we've got a little floral cluster there some butterflies and then we've got this beautiful i think they're bluebells there i'm not very good with my flower types i must admit but they are so so pretty i did create a demonstration with this um i don't know if we're going to get time to do it got a little bit carried away with these i'm afraid um, I did make too many demos for what we needed, but that's what you'll do once you get them home. You'll just keep playing. You'll, you've got stamps here you never even realised you needed. The ducks and the rabbits and the bunnies or hares. I don't know. I think these are rabbits because the, don't hares have longer ears? Someone might have to tell me that. Um, we've got the chickens here as well. So farmyard. Could just be a country garden either way. You've got the tractor there. Perfect for the um, gentlemen's cards that are a little bit harder sometimes to think of themes for welly boots there as well. Um, I've got the welly boots that have the, the name on them. Mine are pink and flowery, but you could color those any way you wanted to. Um, you've got the chicken there, the watering can as well. Um, you've also got here two little baby chicks, which is adorable. And of course the um, shovel or spade and the fork. And these are actually cut out slightly so you can it, make them look as if they are in the dirt there, in the compost, in the mud, whatever you are going into. So then we've got some sentiments as well. Um, these are really lovely. They're a beautiful font, a script font. You've got some that are generic. For example, you've got, um, you've got I'm reading these upside down now. You've got hello in there. You've got thinking of you. Um, but then you've got words that are uh, hoppy birthday. Um, you've got farm meadow in there, sunshine. Oh, you've got hello and spring. So you could say hello sunshine or and you've got spring chicken there. That's really good fun actually, that one. Um, best of the bunch, perfect for those flowers. So you get the idea. You've got some that you can team with the stamps and the images in this collection and some that you can use completely separate if you wanted to. And I think you can never have too many sentiment stamps either. And then the fifth stamp set here, we have our vegetable baskets, perfect for harvest, our bales of straw there as well, and of course the bunch too. This is just, oh, and that's that wheat. I love to make wreaths with this 
wheat stamp here and again that's a demonstration if I don't get time to do it I will do it as a separate video and pop it up um, on social media for you so you can see that too because I was really pleased with how that came out so they are the stamp sets let's just come back for a moment to the overhead so we've got the papers and the stamp sets we have these in this collection as well we have the metal charms don't forget you're in with a chance of winning um, everything you're seeing here in this big giveaway so make sure you're commenting tag your friends as well share with your friends let everyone know that we are here so we've got little bunny rabbits the metal ones and we've got the roosters as well now I might not love the sound of those first thing in the morning because I'm in the countryside sometimes I don't always want to hear them but it is nice really isn't it it's they're lovely to see they're very proud animals so we've got those they're metal charms they're absolutely gorgeous and actually they're quite heavy so they feel like they're really good quality as well um, washi tape I love washi tape I just think there's something so elegant about it uh, actually really modern as well this is a really good quality one what I was doing I was creating a demonstration and I did put some washi tape down I thought no it doesn't quite go there I peeled it back up and I was able to peel it off without damaging the paper at all and put it back on the roll so um, really really good quality we've got three different widths there one has florals on one has uh, radishes, pots of plants, things like that on, bunny rabbits on, and the other one is like a green pattern. So variation there. Last few bits for this collection, then we've got this demonstration video for me to show you. So we've got self-adhesive pearls. As you can see, these are my own ones. These are the ones I've been using. They are beautiful pastel colours. They are adhesive, so you don't need to worry about how you're going to glue them on, and they are flat back. You've got 80 in total there, and the colourways match perfectly, of course, with the papers and everything else that you've seen so far. Now, I love that Craft Consortium do these. In fact, I'm going to get some of these out, um, just one pack. So you've got two packs here of 10 each. Let me just lift these. are um, little ends, uh, chipboard, MDF, I'm not sure, chipboard maybe wooden shapes they're painted white but as you can see oops, look at these florals aren't they gorgeous and they are thick they are sturdy so you're going to be able to glue those on use your foam pads with them if you want to we've got bouquets of flowers there as well watering can and the watering can's got the little robin on that would actually be really nice at christmas time as well i know i said it christmas it's going to come round again eventually you have to think about this don't you when you're bu buying craft items you have to think actually when am I going to be able to use it? How much am I going to be able to use it? How versatile is it? And I think this is a very, very versatile collection. In fact, talking about buying for any time of year, really, we have got an offer over on Craft Stash. If you go and take a look, Craft Consortium, if you are spending over £15 at the moment, you are going to be able to save 10%. And do you know what? Nowadays, we love a bit of a bargain, don't we? So pop on over there and grab that while you can. And also, if you are loving, I've just popped these away. If you are loving your crafting at the moment while you are off, maybe you're home, maybe you can't quite get to the craft shops or the supermarkets to get what you'd usually read in the way of craft magazines, you are also going to be able to pop onto Craft Stash find your favourite magazines and they are all with free delivery at the moment so that is until the 31st of March so make sure you are looking at those as well so maybe you're thinking okay I've got lots of time in time at home now what am I going to be doing well this, this is going to be perfect so get your magazines delivered to you for free and then you can sit and read them to your heart's content so we have got Elizabeth Hogarth. She has is from Elizabeth Hogarth Designs. She's on the design team for Craft Consortium. Now, because I don't have the lovely Angela with me today, um, she has very kindly allowed us to show you one of her demonstrations using Farm Meadow from Craft Consortium. So I'm just going to pop you over to a video I've got on my computer. I'm hoping this works. I've tried and tested it a few times. So here we go. Let's have a look at this um, demonstration. It's about 10, between 10 and 15 minutes long from Elizabeth and she'll run you through some of the products. So enjoy. Hello everybody. I hope you enjoyed my video showing the new Farm Meadow collection from Craft Consortium. It's been designed by Claire Therese Gray, who is a British illustrator and designer. 
Uh, the papers are 200 GSM, but the pearlescent ones are 150 GSM. So, because they're 12 by 12 paper pads, you've got plenty to play with. And as you can see, the designs are very spring-like, very easy to use because you can cut out the elements and you have things like the foiled paper that can bring a spot of glamour to your handmade cards. There's another pearlescent, so you can see the, the sheen on the paper there. So we're going to begin our card by making a framework to fit the lines of paper along so you can do this using your washi tape okay so now we're ready to lay out our design so it's it's going to be like a patchwork so I go with the designs that I can already see on the paper here so I think I'll lay them out first just so to see that I'm happy with the design so I have different thicknesses different colours it's just a matter of laying out like so so I'll speed the film up a little bit while I work through the rest of it but you'll see that the patterns will lay out in different directions so I'm using the designs that I've got I might take this one this way so that you can see the wellies when you look at the card and then the ducks can lay this way and then I will carry on so When I get to this point where I have these smaller triangles, rather than using the remaining strips because I can make another card with them, what I do is I stick all of these down, cut these ends off and then flip these end bits so that they will then um, be small enough to fit within these triangles. Now I want to cut the ends off here. You could use a pair of scissors, turn it over and then cut along the edge here. I prefer to use the Swan Morton surgical knife. The particular blade that I would use for straight lines is 10A. Um, you do have to change the blades often. It, it's safer to cut with a sharper blade. So I buy them in packs off Amazon. So I'll try and put the link in my comments below. Ordinarily, I would use a glass cutting mat. Um, but the particular one I have glares up on the camera. So I don't want to blind you. But imagine that you're doing this on a cutting mat. Take the ruler at an angle. If you cut like this, you're forcing the blade. You're really making it as easy as possible for yourself by putting it on the angle. But you get a very, very precise finish. Just remember to keep your blade sharp and you'll, you'll have no problem. Keep your hands out the way, obviously. Keep your fingers out the way. There we go. So we'll flip it over and then once again, all of these bits 
will fit in and then we will go back again and cut the ends off so I'll go ahead again and just finish off matching up these triangles The pattern's coming along nicely now, so I'm just going to tuck in some small bits of washi. So I want the end that meets the line of washi tape to be neat, but you can line it up and then like a finger lift tape, you can tear it away and then it was, you'll get a smarter line if you cut it again with your knife we're at the point where we want to bring in the main topper for our card so i'm going to try the wooden shapes that i have shown in a previous video about the farm meadow collection and because this is going to be a, a mothering sunday type of card I have picked out these two bouquets of meadow flowers so if you haven't got the wooden embellishments or you want to use another colour you could try the stamp set so again there's the stamp and there's the wooden embellishment alongside the stamps depicting animals and tractors and flowers are some sentiment stamps they're a little bit quirky they say things like party animal and pick up the crop absolutely quackers and the one i'm going to use is best of the bunch so i'll put down the base card We're going to lightly edge the patchwork piece of our card. So this is an, an egg sponge that I use that had some pink, lots of layers of pink on it. There's a little bit left, so I'm not actually putting any ink on it. I'm using the old ink because that's all you need. Okay, and I want to mount this with some bone pads or you can use the tape this is what I happen to have to hand and then I use my pokey tool to lift the bits off so at this final point just move it around to confirm that you like the pattern that you've got so I think I'm going to go with the wellies on the corner here so we'll map that up and then we're going to use our flower topper so what i've decided to do is take the blue outer ring and i'm going to stick that down first and then the pink inner circle i'm going to put some sticky pads on so it's just that little attention to detail that will make your card stand out and then my sentiment will sit down here
yep like that so let's stick our ring on I'll take off the excess on my lid and then I'll place this centrally and then I'm going to put some sticky pads onto my pink topper just to give the card a little bit of dimension so I tend to build from the back upwards so there we go that's going to sit in there and then our sentiment will go in underneath best of the bunch you could always put another sentiment here for mother's day or something like that and i'm just going to put this bouquet on the angle so that your eye looks through the card so we'll use some glue dots for that which means that if you want to, you can take this off and use it as a badge or another little gift or something. So there's three glue dots which will allow you to peel the topper off afterwards. So then this is going to go at the angle and then we'll glue our best of the bunch down. Here is the finished card, so we've made a patchwork themed background, we've used the wooden embellishments from the farm meadows, the farm papers and the beautiful washi tape, uh, not forgetting the quirky stamps in the corner here. So I hope you enjoyed that. That was really, really beautiful. So that's using the Farm Meadow collection and I'm going to use that one now. I'm just going to close that down on my computer just because I don't want any that replaying itself. So fingers crossed that will all maybe go away. <laughs> so I don't want that cutting in again. So thank you very much to Elizabeth for doing that for us. So now I've got my own take on that um, collection and it's um, let me just pop you down onto the down screen like so so what I'm going to be doing is bringing in first of all by bringing this 12 by 12 again there we go so what I've used from this is if I skip through towards the back here where are you oh no you're not sorry I tell a lie I'm not using the farm the farm meadow collection I'm actually using the country the cottage garden collection let's do a swap shall we and have a look at this one as well so um, before I move on to this one I've just got my demos modeled up before I move on to this one I've actually got some photos to show you that um, our Angela like I say Angela couldn't be with us today but I've got some photos to show you that she has put together for the farm meadow i don't want to get the two collections confused so i want to run through those first so let's just have a little look at these so we've got here a beautiful basket here she's made using the 12 by 12 the larger ones um really really pretty perfect for easter of course and that's coming up in not too long now that is a gorgeous gentleman's card as well with the tractor and with the welly boots or maybe for a little boy as well and in the background you've got that backing paper there with the um, animals on 
I love this because Angela's incorporated or, or one of her design team members have incorporated some die cuts there with a really simple um, uh, die with a really simple um, die cut and backing paper in there as well. We've got a mini album that's been cut, covered here, journal, and you can see the inside of the journal there as well. Really neat and tidy. And of course, you don't have to use pattern paper for all of the pages either. It can just be the alternate ones. Make a nice recipe book that actually as well. And you've got these fun ducks, so or geese, duck, geese. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but they can be used uh, using a stamping technique, like a masking technique, to make them overlap because they are. Oh, they are um, individual stamps there. So let's come back now. So I'm going to be moving on from the Farm Meadow collection onto the Cottage Garden. So if we just have a quick look through this. So what I wanted to show you was the papers. Now look at these. Aren't they just so much fun? Still Craft Consortium. Um, so these two collections were launched within a few weeks of each other. So I've got here the um, on the on the backing sheet. I don't know if you remember in the backing sheet of the um, 12 by 12 on the inside covers we had images to cut out. So we've got the same here with these ones as well. And then the papers are beautiful. They're very very vivid. Lovely bright colours for summer. We've got picket fences with florals along them. They're all double sided and they they are all a really good quality. You get numerous ones of each. So. If you've got a favourite, you can put that aside and still use some of them as well. This one, actually, I don't know how well you can see. See where that light is reflecting off of the, the purple? We've actually got a gloss over these hanging... They, they actually look like grapes, but they're not their flowers. But we've got a beautiful gloss over the top of those. This is the paper I was looking for. This is the one I'm using for my first demonstration. So it's a gorgeous wood grain. It's a pale green on one side and then it's a darker green on the other. We've got bumblebees as well with flowers, so really good and fun. Harlequin quints too. Your ditzy print, so your polka dots, which is always important, isn't it? We've got some tulips in here too. Some, um, so I'll just read you some of these um, words out here. So we've got springtime sunshine, drip drop daisies, April showers, just all perfect for this time of year, but of course lots of these can be used other times of year as well. I love the birdhouses. I think that's really fresh and really fun. We've got them with different colour backing papers there. We've got bumblebees as well. And these bumblebees are glossed over. The wings are glossy. Um, I don't know if you can just see the light catching on some of those, but really good fun. Now, these ones are beautiful as well. So these are like your toppers you can cut out. They are double sided, so you've got your square toppers there, lovely fun characters, absolutely beautiful. And then on the reverse, if I just bring this in here, you can see we've got these strips. These are great as um, backing strips for you to then put some of your embellishments and such over the top. So that's your paper pads. Now, talking about embellishments, we have the same as we had with the farm meadow. So we've got the wooden pieces here. You just take these out because they are stunning. Again, you've got, I think it's 10 in here. Some bigger, some smaller. But we've got, so we've got the cottage. Who doesn't want to live there? Because that is gorgeous, isn't it? Really, really sweet. We've got the potting shed as well. So like I say, these are all wooden. These are all sort of your, your painted chipboard. Or MDF, sorry. I keep saying chipboard. It's not. The Wellington boots again with the birds in there with the flowers around them. The little bee hive there, bee house as well with the birds on the top. Um, I love this little mouse as well. So, so super cute. Aren't they really, really cute? We've got the picket fence as well. Probably one of my favourite images because I just love that you can build up the dimension with that. Got a packet of seeds there too. And then we've got our gardening tools, bouquet of flowers. And lastly, we've got our little bird houses as well, all in a row there. So we've got those. So those embellishments would fit perfectly over those backing papers in there. Now stamps. Craft Consortium always give you lots and lots of different designs of stamps. And we've actually got four here. The only difference with this one to the Farm Meadow is you don't have the sentiments here. But we've got lots of imagery instead. So we've got, again, as you just saw in the wooden pieces, We've got the um, bee house there, the beehive. We've got the 
um, bird houses and we've got the Wellington boots but included with this in fact last time I put these on the close-up didn't I I think I will do that just to be able to show you these properly there we go aren't they just so cute I love that we've got the colored images over the top on the packaging so you can get inspiration for how to color those if you want to they're really really pretty now this one is one of my favorite sets of stamps because you've got the large cottage in there this is what I'm going to be doing my demonstration with and then we've got at the bottom the picket fence and we've got some florals as well so you can build those up but not only that we do have words as well we've got home sweet home we've got new home we've got bumblebee there we've got co the word cozy so a really really sweet stamp set don't forget with these if you're spending 15 pounds on on craft consortium over on craft stash you're going to get 10 percent off as well in here you do have the picket fence slightly different picket fence this one doesn't have the florals at the bottom whereas this one on this set did have the florals at the base there so different ways of doing it we've got the bunny rabbit with the archway of florals there as well going over the top we've got the little mouse there very cute little mouse with the I don't know if there's a fork or a spade behind with the little bird on top and then we've got the tools again with the birds doing the gardening and you've got a few little words in there as well include some more sentiments for you to use and lastly for these stamp sets we've got the potting shed perfect for your um the gardeners in your life maybe your granddad loves his potting shed or your uncle or whoever female or male it's completely uh, universal for these so you've got the um bum another bumblebee there we've got i love this it's spring we got so excited <laughs> we wet our plants <laughs> yeah i love that sentiment i'll have to read that out again in a little while without giggling and then we've got the images as well. This is a lovely large image. We've got the pots just starting to tip over there with the bird on, um, the little mouse there with his packet of seeds. So really beautiful imagery, all hand-drawn imagery. Imagery, it's absolutely stunning. So there's your stamp sets. And then we have the pearls as well. And look, I haven't delved into these pearls. I've been good. <coughs> Excuse me. I've left these ones alone, but that may not be the case in a few minutes when I finish these cards because I do tend to put a couple of pearls on the corners of things. So let's get started making this card. So typically our second demonstration here. So the country garden, like I said to you, I did take the wood grain um, effect paper from this one and I'm going to use that as a backing sheet. Let's pop this out of the way. There we go. And I'm going to use my stamp there. So I have got a card that is a gate fold. So simply a long piece of cardstock folded into the centre. But with this, if you don't have cardstock this long, you can actually use a couple of pieces. Let me just show you with this. So if you have A4, for example, and trim down the height of it, you could actually fold this maybe about there you'd measure this you'd measure it so it's more accurate maybe about there do this twice so you've got two of these and then you could actually glue two together do you see what i'm saying yeah so there are ways around that i'm actually going to use this card for stamping on in a moment so i've got my gatefold there that i'm going to put my stamped image over the top of so i'm going to take my stamped image here um sharon loves wood grain uh, Janine beautiful colored pearls they are aren't they they are gorgeous I absolutely love these collections and I think for this time of year it is perfect I'd imagine many of us are going to be spending more time in the garden over the coming weeks and months um, and you know what it is the perfect time of year for that anyway so let's pop this so you can see how large this stamp is and it is already sticky what I love about these is, is the quality of the stamp they stick really really well to my acrylic block despite the fact I'm not very good with my blocks I don't clean them as often as I should um, ideally clean them with warm soapy water allow them to dry naturally and they will be good to go the same goes for your clear stamps actually too um, but I don't do that as regular as I should and some stamps I find don't always stick very well except for good quality ones and these stick perfectly now I've opted to go for a brown ink rather than a black because I just think it's a little less harsh not quite as striking but when you um, color in the image it all blends in beautifully and you'll see what I mean I have got some images already colored in and cut out ready to show you in a little while look at that isn't that perfect let me just bring you to this close-up just so you can see 
how perfect is that that is gorgeous perfect coloring in if you don't want to do coloring maybe stamp brown onto craft cardstock that would look beautiful um you could bring your watercolors to that if you wanted to it's entirely up to you um don't forget as well i'm going to be doing some coloring now but don't forget you have got a free delivery on all your uk magazines from craft stash so if you're loving the demonstrations here we will be with you every friday i can I don't like to make any promises, but I can 99.9% .9 guarantee we will be. I will be here every Friday through thick and thin. Um, it may be from my own house, it may be from here, um, but even if something happens with um, post, you know, postal services, I will still be bringing you inspiration and demonstration. So don't worry about that. So, but if you need inspiration through the rest of the week, magazines are a fantastic source inspiration like that and ideas um, maybe start a new craft there's some fantastic magazines on craft stash that can help you delve into a brand new craft free delivery on all, all magazines to the uk so definitely get over there and grab those now while you're indoors more so i've got lots of pencils here i'm not going to color this entire image because i want to show you the finished card of course quite quickly but um what i'm just going to show you is how how pencil looks on a stamped image because we automatically think of our alcohol pens when we think of coloring but actually pencils can look equally as beautiful if not sometimes better because sometimes the ble blending is easier so uh, i actually have chameleon pencils but i have a mix here i do have some different ones as well so for example on this thatched roof i'm going to bring in a lighter color throughout the center so if you imagine this thatch is curved in fact i might just see boy if you just bear with me a second i might just see if i can zoom into this a little bit more for you just so you can see what i'm doing there i will have to zoom back out don't let me forget to zoom back out or you won't see what i'm doing so i'm using long strokes up and down there with my pencil and to give the impression of the thatch and then i'm going to go in at the bottom with the darker colour which with the chameleon pencils is on the other end of the pencil but you may have others and then I'm just going to blend that in like so and then I've got another brown here somewhere I do have other browns there's another one and then I'm going to take a much darker brown around the base the very base and do exactly the same in a smaller area little lines little strokes it actually works better with a sharper pencil here because you can really get those strokes in there we go so you can see i'm starting to go from light down to dark there now let me pull this back out for you just so that you, so that you can see a little bit more of what we're doing here not too far don't want to move you around either there we go see camera work and everything all at the same time let me show you the image that I've already coloured in so it's really pretty I've cut that out now when I'm cutting out stamped images what I like to do if I can is actually leave a white border around the entire image the reason for this is if I try to get too close I'm actually going to risk cutting into the brown line or your, your stamped image there the stamped line then it starts to look messy if you intentionally leave a little bit of a white edge and I did the same on the picket fences here as well it makes it look a lot neater and nobody can tell if you're not perfectly accurate either so there's a little tip for you if you're cutting out your stamped images it makes everything much much easier when you're going around detail as well you can kind of curve around the detail rather than making it exact um, so i've stamped two of the picket fences with the flowers colored those and cut them out and the little bird as well somewhere here i might find him in a minute oh there they are i've also got two little bumblebees as well that I'm going to put on my card so let's build this card up now so bring in my gate I'm just going to put my pencils away because they do tend to roll everywhere stay in there there we go so I have actually got this wood grain now I've cut two panels that will fit and as you can see with this one I've gone round the edge with a brown distress ink now I just find this helps now what I did is I didn't go around the edge of this one because I wanted to show you the difference so that green is beautiful on the white 
but it's a little bit pale it doesn't quite pop it doesn't stand out when you add your brown around the edge of course that lifts it that much more makes that white stand out even more so this is the reason I try to go round many of my layers so you can do it a couple of ways so i'm doing it in the air because i i don't want to get any ink on my mat down here but if you can't do it in the air it's not as easy for you what you need to get yourself is a resistant mat ink, ink blending mat ink resistant mat with different names for them i've got one here so then you can go like so and that is a softer look okay around the edge either way whichever suits you better i prefer this way to be honest there we go all the way around the edge and i love with ink blending you don't have to be too accurate either so they are going to go onto there just with a tape runner um, you could use double-sided tape you could use wet tape uh, sorry wet glue i prefer not to use wet glue sometimes because i find um the paper can warp a little bit if you put too much on so uh, a drier glue such as this is usually ideal now we have got a deal of the day of course over on craft stuff we always have a deal of the day um but i love on fridays i get to actually tell you about it so the deal of the day today is the RSPB Spring Birds of the Season Habitat Dies and Stamp Bundle. That is usually $20.99 and today it's only $8.99. So it's well worth popping over there and taking a look at that. So there's our base. Now I have got a panel of plain cardstock and the same, there you go, you see the same paper but the reverse side. Of this so this white cardstock I've gone around the white edge as well this was only cut not cut to a specific size the way I cut this was just to make sure that my stamped image would sit over the top quite well I was trying to work out which way it was it should have been that way there we go so I cut the white I inked around the edge I cut the green as well and I'm going to take the white onto the dark green this is such a beautiful collection. I love these wood grain papers. I love the stamps as well. The stamps are absolutely beautiful. I will look at some more of your comments in a moment. So I'm just going to place that in the middle. If you just visualise, what you want to do is place the glue on the reverse just down one half. Now it doesn't matter which half you do, depending on which way you want your card to open. I'm just going to put it down this half. So keep it just away from the centre to make sure you don't overlap slightly that back making sure it's fairly central about halfway and then you've got a card with an opening like so and of course the back looks lovely because it's got the green there too okay so there's our gatefold of course that will that will um, stand by itself as well very well so then I've got I did stamp home sweet home beforehand in the brown ink as well and then I've got my little house that I can put on the top I've got foam uh, foam pads on the back of here so just remove the backing of these it's always easier to do this when you're not filming so I've never had much luck removing the backing of foam pads live it's the sort of thing that goes absolutely fine when no one's watching and then it seems that they get stuck to your nails and all sorts when you try to do them so a pokey tool something like that is usually ideal for helping you with this so by adding the foam pads, I've then got a tiny little bit of a shadow just behind. You just see it there with the um, the back of the chimney. And that makes that house look as if it's uh, lifted up slightly. And then I'm going to do the same with the picket fences. Now with these picket fences, what I've done is I've actually added two layers of foam pads. I'm not sure if you can quite see that. But that just means that this is going to sit. I'm going to overlap this slightly too. It's going to sit over the house and raised up from it slightly because there's that extra layer of dimension and the other one exactly the same so I've got two and put this one again slightly over the edge making sure my phone phone my phone tape my phone pads sorry are still on the paper but the edges of the picket fence just overlap that just makes it look a little more fun I have got a little pad on my little bird He's going to sit there on the fence. I'm stuck to the fence, not to the paper underneath. And lastly, I'm just going to do my little bees. So there's one there. 
and the other one I'm actually going to put over onto the other side just there there we go so that's my my card I'm just going to pop you to a different screen now so you can see this close up there we go so there's the card if you can see the dimension that we've got with the foam pads if you have something like silicone glue as well you could use that too but that will sit by itself as well you don't need anything you don't have to worry about the extra weight that will hold itself really well and I really like that um, that pencil colouring actually I think it gives it something a little bit different almost like a watercolour look but without the mess of watercolour at all so I'm um, really happy with that it's funny when you put a card together you never quite know what it's going to look like until you've done the demonstration <laughs> oh yes it actually looks okay so thank you for joining us I'm going to recap very quickly the two collections from Craft Consortium so we have got the farm meadow here absolutely beautiful this is the one that has the bunny rabbits in this is the one that has the tractors um, some of the gardening tools as well, as well so perfect for your gardener perfect for anyone who's got an allotment uh, if you live in the countryside as I do uh, all that sort of thing very much a spring feel to this one really beautiful both of them are brand new collections they've just been released by craft consortium very very recently so um, we are loving this cutting into it leaving them as whole sheets making large uh, projects with them so beautiful with that one so i then just used and i've got a few more examples to show you actually from angela the cottage garden so this is the one that i just used with little cottage in this one has the birds in it has the mice in it has uh, all the little houses and the potting shed and such in fact Angela did send us some inspiration so let me just get that for you so you can have a look through this inspiration as well because it is beautiful as you can see so I'll just bring you back to bear with me the beginning there we go so you can see she's used the stamped image I think that's stamped image there I say I'm not sure whether Angela's made this she certainly sent me the photos but whether it's her or the design team they're absolutely stunning we've got the bouquet of flowers there on the floral um, backing paper as well with some die cut squares there this is gorgeous I think it's like an embroidery hoop um, with the paper in rather than fabric and then we've got some images they may be the wooden pieces or cut out pieces on top this is beautiful lots of fussy cutting here lots of layers really bright and summery I think that's absolutely gorgeous and this is amazing as well so it's an altered art piece with a wooden wheelbarrow which is perfect for the theme of these it's an absolutely gorgeous and we've got the beehive there of course there's lots of bumblebees running through this collection they are all gorgeous there I love that that's so pretty so there's some more inspiration for you using the cottage garden so they are the two collections um, I have got lots and lots of comments to catch up with um, I'm going to have to run through I'll just buy a few more so um, we've got Pauline said oh how great are these samples they are absolutely beautiful Terry the clouds on that first card look fab I think they were done using stenciling there Kelly loves the welly um, Sharon loved the wisteria as well uh, lovely new home card that is very very true um, I'm sorry it's scrolling so quickly I can't see um, who said that <laughs> but there's there's just so many comments I'll go through and I will like as many of them as possible thank you for joining me like I say we are I am going to be here every Friday um, when I say here I mean with you one o'clock on the craft stash Facebook page whatever happens the internet should always keep running so uh, that shouldn't be an issue so I will be here sharing inspiration projects ideas products whatever it may be um, we are changing things slightly obviously with guests joining me and things we have to um, but we'll you know we'll be back to normal as soon as possible I hope you all stay very well um, as we are at the moment as well follow these guidelines uh, and make sure you're crafting because it's really really good for mental health and um, there's so many fantastic craft products and craft techniques out there to learn um, craft stash at the moment like I say on those magazines there's free delivery at the moment for the UK well worth grabbing those and just have a look at craft stash website in general actually because there is so much on there that you probably haven't even discovered so have a little browse through all the different 
uh, the brands, have a browse through all the different products as well. Now I have some winners to announce. Um, so, oh, I did have a question um, about the pencils I was using. I was actually using a range. So um, I had some from Chameleon. There are some Chameleon products on uh, Craft Stash. I'm not sure about the pencils, but basically any pencils you can colour with. Um, but the best ones are watercolour ones. Now, I he heard a rumour that Tonic recently bought out some Nouveau uh, like pencils. It's well worth having a look at those because the rumours I've heard are that they are amazing. They would be perfect for colouring without water even because watercolour pencils are really soft. So colouring in stamped images would be perfect. So now, um, I believe we have some winners. We have two winners, yes. So one would be from the commenting on the post earlier in the week. Make sure you always keep a lookout for that. And one will be from commenting on this live feed. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining me. So the first winner is, and I can't do a drum roll on my own because it sounds really silly. So the first winner is Cads Law. She said, love seeing what others have made. And this is it, isn't it? Well done, Kaz. Um, if get drop craft stash a message or we'll get in contact with you someone in the office who's left in the office will sort that out with you and get a prize to you but um seeing what others have made i think that's really important make sure you're sharing your crafts online we have the craft stash facebook page that we are always sharing with people so i think it's really important to make sure that you know other people out there are crafting and doing what you're doing and keeping up uh, positivity throughout at the moment and the second winner is just do your own little drum roll maybe um pat philbrick she said these craft consortium goodies really look worth winning thanks for the chance they absolutely are and they are brand new products as well so barely been out a few weeks some of them so well done pat as well you've both won uh, a massive bundle like i say the, the giveaway today was over 200 pounds so um we're as generous as ever with our giveaways so thank you again for joining us. I will see you next Friday at one o'clock, every Friday at one o'clock. We are also working in the background while I'm home more on getting lots more videos out to you. Um, we're thinking maybe some videos for children. We're thinking maybe videos for the older generations. Uh, there's going to be all sorts there. So keep an eye on that uh, Craft Stash Facebook page. I look forward to seeing you again next Friday. Please take care, keep yourself and your families well, and I will see you again soon. Thank you again for joining me and just keep on crafting.